home. My name is Beto. I'm here with my wife, Millie, and some new friends, <laughs> Mark and Kat. <laughs> how are you guys doing today? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you thank for having you. us. Yeah, this awesome. Is okay, so today's <laughs> today's topic is I'm fat. I need help. I don't know what it is. I don't know if to laugh or cry about it. <laughs> uh, a little bit of everything, but it's true. <laughs> That's uh, great. So it's called Elevate performance yes yes right yeah. and what is like being a faith base is that is that new, a newer thing is that come on is there other you know gyms that are like open about that or how what have you experienced in that sense well this came as a vision from god to my wife so if you can want to yeah so um to answer your question there are or we're aware of other gyms in the space that do um, are outwardly uh, faith-based what that means you know i think every you know, business, every, you know, owner is probably going to meet something a little bit different. Um, for myself and my husband and for our business, um, when we personally started um, our own, I guess, getting into our own faith and our own walk a lot deeper, we were attending Bible college, really trying to understand the word a lot more. Um, God spoke out to me and said, you know, you can't transform your personal life and leave your business on the side. I said, okay, what does that look like? And so he was very clear um, in in the vision that he gave me that, you know, people come to a gym broken, looking for healing. Um, a lot of people go through breakups, right? They're devastated, they're empty, wow. they're trying to seek for more. And we are fully aware that, you know, we can help from a physical um, perspective, but the emptiness that you're seeking isn't going to come from mm -hmm. weights. It's not mm -hmm. going to come from weight loss, right? You might physically feel better, but that empty void is not going to go away. Uh, and so we wanted to, um, you know, with the vision that God gave us, really make sure that, you know, we were open about being faith-based, but we want to still make sure that everyone is welcome, regardless of where they're at in their life. And mm -hmm. so we, you know, maybe they're not able to step foot in a gym. I mean, I'm sorry, in a church just yet, right? They might not be in a space in their life where they're comfortable stepping into a church. So being able to be prayed over at a gym or having a conversation about Jesus or asking questions. And uh, we have a confidential prayer request box. So just things like that where, you know, they can ask questions and we can be a bridge to somebody finding you know jesus being saved going to church and so it's just it's been amazing to to kind of walk that out and so for us it's never been about religion per se but allowing people to experience like the love of jesus the leadership of jesus um and so that was kind of the i guess determining factor for us is you know um not necessarily, you know, making it about the religion, but making it about, you know, the biblical foundations and who we are and what our beliefs are. Um, and going back to um, the woman that you're talking about, I think that was a concern for us at first as well. But the thing that we didn't realize is there's lots of Christians out there, right? Mm -hmm. And so people started coming to us Christians were coming to us because they were looking for a Christian community. And so we were thinking the reverse, right? Like people aren't going to come because, you know, we're openly saying that we're faith-based, but it kind of did the opposite to be honest with you. Like now people are coming because we are faith-based mm -hmm. and we're like, wow, God, like we didn't even really think we were over here being like, oh my gosh, like this is going to hurt our business. And it did the exact opposite. So I did a research. I, one day I get out of my house and I was looking for a gym. Like God sent me somewhere where I can fulfill my needs. And uh, we have a few gyms around the house. We always see people working out, like it needs mm. to be some something here. And we walk and I walk through it. But I was like, no. And then I went to 24 Fitness and I'm lost there. I don't know what to do. I just love the sauna. I take a shower there. But the music is horrible. Like, <laughs> F this, F that. And, mm -hmm. You know, like, I no, I hate the music. I just want to be in the sauna and relax. And then I try to work out there. And I just don't like the music or the people, too. Right now, kind of, I feel like people is eating you. Like, like. I have clothing, but they take me everything. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. <laughs> oh, oh, was, uh, last time I went was so uncomfortable, and um, yeah, I felt uh, I felt lost uh, that's, that's at a the bad gym. Experience. Yeah. Right. And yeah, 
Unfortunately, I think it's an experience that happens often in our space because um, there is a lot of vanity. And I know mm -hmm. that you can kind of speak um, to this as well, but mm -hmm. You know, there is a lot of, um, and even we'll, we'll go back to like the way that Elevate started, right? We were a very traditional bodybuilding gym. You know, we used influencer marketing to grow our brand in the beginning. But a statement I would get from friends and family or, you know, just individuals is, I'm not shredded enough to go to your gym. And I'm like, wait, what do you mean? It's a gym. Like, that's where you go to like, you know, build it. Yeah. And they were like, no way. Like, I see this influencer there and this. And I was like, oh, got it. So I, you know, we wanted to create a welcoming space, but it was the exact opposite, right? Mm. People felt intimidated or um, when you have, you know, big guys and they might be the most loving yeah. guys ever, right? Standing in front of mirrors, flexing without shirts off, you know, their shirts off and things like that. Um, it can make people feel uncomfortable really quickly. And so we we realized that and that was one of the transformations. And this that, that transformation was um, a long time ago, back in 2016 when I was actually saved. And that was the first kind of cleanup that we did at the facility. But I think going back to your point is that happens a lot in the gym space. And I think that that is one of the things that um, we get compliments on all the time is no matter who I talk to, whether it's another member, another coach, a staff, the owners, everyone is nice. Being mm. nice goes a long way, mm. you know? Um, and so I don't know what your take is on that, but. Uh, um, I mean, I don't know where to start, but <laughs> <laughs> the gym space is toxic. It was mm. toxic for me when I was, um, started my journey and I didn't think it was I definitely believe that the enemy used it slowly to take me away from where my true path was but I didn't I, I grew up with God mm. and I grew up Catholic I went to Catholic school my whole life 18 years high old five. Me high too. five yeah <laughs> and uh, but I felt like I felt like I was being taught talked to not taught to just kind of you're doing this wrong or doing that wrong mm. versus teaching me what the Bible says about doing it wrong and how to change those things. So as soon as I turned 18, I stopped going to church. Later on, I moved out of the house. And that's kind of when the world happened. Literally, it was just in the world doing mm -hmm. things I shouldn't be doing. And, Did you grow uh, up here in the U.S.? Yeah, I grew up okay. in Orange County. And uh, even, though, even though I turn my back to God, God never turned his back away from mm. me. You know, he's always been there in moments where I probably should have been in jail or I probably should have died a couple times. God has always been there. But I believe in the beginning, my journey with fitness was healthy. Mm -hmm. Then it became vanity. It became mm -hmm. trying to date as, many, as much as I could, be the cool guy, be that guy without the shirt on flexing looking at fitness through a different lens and i believe slowly as i got uh, older in my age and more away from god the enemy used that to try and put me down mm. really try and put me down and so i had my own health journey even though i was a coach and and at this time, I haven't met my wife yet. I was I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I, I stopped caring about my about myself because my investment was my body, and it's like I don't care about my body. So I stopped doing the things good for my body. But now realizing my body is a temple, who am I really glorifying with my body? Mm -hmm. God. I should be glorifying God with everything that I do. And so as time transition, and I, I met my wife, and we went to start going to church together she had you know her her testimony and and then i had a, my own again with the lord and it changed what we do today so a lot of people who have probably been in the gym in the past nine-ish years that wasn't our path in the beginning this is recent this is over the past wow. two three years together but maybe with the gym less than a year yeah so, Right. Something yeah, I would like say that. like in 2026, we started to really shift more to general population, really making it a place like my mom would come work out. We had, you know, all walks of life, different age groups. Um, and then, yeah, it wasn't until 2023 that we openly started talking about mm -hmm. being a faith based business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you said, you had said uh, you started the business mm -hmm. without like faith based, mm -hmm. but then you said uh, you got saved. Mm -hmm. at some point how was that 
Yeah, so I did not grow up with religion in my life at all. Um, my mom was raised Mormon. My dad was raised Catholic in very strict religious households. So when they got married, they were like, you know, we're just not going to implement that in our children's lives. They can make their own wow. decision. Um, so, I mean, we prayed on holidays. Like I knew who God was. My grandma had, you know, rosaries and things like that, but it was kind of the extent of my knowledge. Um, and then in actually, after I had started the gym, I went through a really public breakup and it was, you know, I felt every time I went through a breakup, I was just devastated. Like I was heartbroken. I felt empty. And at this time I was like, you know, there's just, there has to be more to this. Like I am so tired of letting a relationship break me. And so a coach, at the time that was at Elevate, he was like, have you ever tried going to church? And I was like, no, but what do I have to lose? And so I went to a few churches in Orange County and nothing really resonated with me, but, um, you know, thank God, I kept going. And I went to Mariners in Irvine and had my first experience with the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and anyone that has had their first experience with the Holy Spirit is just you know, it overtakes yeah. you, you know, and I was like, I want more, you know, so I started to get thirsty. I joined their um, Rooted, their 10 week course. Mm -hmm. I dove all in. I was baptized, you know, I was on fire for the Lord. Uh, and I wanted yeah. to know as much as I could because I knew nothing, you know, and so. Um, when we got together, it was actually one of the things that I was like, oh, I don't know how this is going to work because he wasn't going to church. And I was like, how are we going to raise our kids? Like, I want my kids to go to church. Like, I want that instilled in, in our household. And so he was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know about this. So he started going. So I was praying. So I prayed for him to find re you know, find cool. his relationship with God for three years. So wow. it wasn't a short period of time. It was mm -hmm. a wow. long period of time. And um, he would go to church with me and do this. <laughs> <laughs> Not too happy about it. No. no. And I was like, then why are you here? And like, he just wanted to go. I love you. Exactly. <laughs> and I was like, you can't be here for me. You have to be here for yourself. Wow. Um, and so, yeah. And he can share how God worked through him. And he had, you know, an experience. And he started becoming very curious. Like, okay, like, maybe my wife has a point. So he started praying. Like, okay, God, like, show me like you know like let me you know experience this like what does it mean to have uh, an experience with god or like how come my wife can hear you and i can't and so he kind of started mm. praying for that and god showed up for him in a really big way and so when god showed up for him which i'll let him share that you know my faith had always been here and then his went like this wow and i was like wait wait what do you mean what's <laughs> happening um and god um you know started to to reveal to him, you know, not just the good side of Christianity, but you know, the there's a, a light and there's a dark. Mm -hmm. And for me, I just knew the light, right? Like I knew the good side and I didn't want anything to do with the understanding dark. the dark side. I was like, no, you know, church on Sundays makes me feel great. I love my worship music. This makes me a better person. That was the extent of my Christianity. And so, you know, when, when God got, you know, hold of Mark, um, he was like, nope, you're going to see it all. <clears throat> and so it, it really scared me. Like I was very, you know, fearful. I was like, I don't know if I want to know, you know, about, you know, the devil and, and, you know, spiritual warfare and, you know, all of these things. And then it was in our house and I was like, okay, guess, you know, we can't deny this anymore. And so um, it was very real for us. And after that experience, God called him first to, well, it was probably calling me, but I was just denying it. Um, to, we, he called us to a different church. And um, at this time, we were kind of having a conflict in our marriage too, because he, you know, was like wanting to learn more and, and, and really just on fire again for the Lord and submerging himself in all of this. And, and I was just unsure, you know, I was like, I don't know if I can, if I can do this. And, and so when we went to a service at the church that we go to now, which is um, Freedom House in Fullerton, the first thing that they had on their um, FH TV, which is the TV that they, you know, do the updates and stuff was Bible college. And I was like, okay, Thanks God, that's that's what I needed because I was asking him like if this is if this is real like then show me like I I need more answers I don't I didn't know the Bible enough I had never read it you know again it was six years of going to church on a Sunday playing worship music and thinking that that was it and that's so amazing. that's kind of how the whole journey transpired 
And uh, wow. yeah, we went to Bible college. The first semester was uh, the study of pneumatology. And so just really opening up our hearts and minds to the Holy Spirit. It was never something that went in my prayers. I had actually prayed and, you know, asked for the Holy Spirit to come and learning that, you know, the Holy Spirit is our connection to God and, and opening up that um that pathway just to be immersed in, in him even more um transformed our marriage transformed mm -hmm. our lives transformed mm -hmm. our business and so that's where we're at today so wow. it sounds to me like a beautiful journey because i love how i mean you're saying six years to get to this new understanding right now of the holy spirit but it took you six years of maybe just showing up and you know going through like oh church is fun or church is good for me and i I mean, I think there's value in that, but at the same time, it's almost like God wants more. Mm -hmm. Like he wants to, like he has so much more, but also it speaks so much about like how patient God is, right? And the people that might be listening, there might be in that period, right? Where like, well, I show up to church, I'm a good person, right? Or mm -hmm. things like that. But uh, I think there's a deeper invitation always with God, right? And the Holy Spirit. So... You said something dark happened, and then you looked at Mark. <laughs> what? I mean, how dark, or what was that? <laughs> yeah, uh, so taking some steps back, uh, let's start maybe around 2020. So in 2020... COVID. COVID. We got engaged. COVID had just barely started, so we didn't know what we all went through. And so we got engaged. We got married shortly after in 2021, uh, got into our own condo, became, and then in that same time, because I wasn't a part of Elevate from the beginning, she had started it in her garage. And from her garage, her HOA said, you can't do this anymore. There's like too much going on. So oh, wow. she opened up a space in Huntington Beach in 2015. I came on board in 2017 as an independent contractor and I was paying rent. I've had my only job has been being a trainer. So that's the only thing I know how to do from 18 until I think I was 27 at that time. And we got to know each other. She saw that I had some experience. She had some really great strengths and where I was weak and likewise. And so she asked me to be her business partner and I didn't want to. I said, I got out of this space of the corporate side of fitness to start something on myself. And so I took two weeks to actually say yes. I was like, okay, this is a good opportunity. We're still friends at this time. We got to know each other. We were very uh, cordial. Um, and with time being in all these like meetings and getting to know each other, I started to have feelings for her. She said no. Uh, <laughs> and then she started to have feelings for me. And I was like, but you said no. no my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then things just kind of took off. But we didn't start our relationship with God at all. We didn't. So we were still in the world, going out, doing things we shouldn't be doing, sex before marriage. And as... Again, as time continued and 2020 is going on, we were struggling. Like we had, I mean, transparently, we had a very big blow up, um, so much so that I thought, well, I was, I was thinking to myself, are we gonna, is, is this like cause for divorce? Like, what is this? <clears throat> and I remember going to the beach and the beach is my solitude place with the Lord. And I was in Tower 44 in Newport and I just prayed and I heard, she still loves you and continue to do what you need to be doing for me. And I turned around and I looked back at the tower and it said 44 and said, okay, I'm gonna do this thing for 44 days. I'm gonna do what, the God, what God wants me to do, what my wife wants me to do. I'm gonna get back into the health that I need to be in for the Lord. So I did this little 44 day challenge and that slowly transformed our lives by going to therapists and counseling. And this is, this is still 2020? No, because we're already married. So this is 2021. So <clears throat> during this time and trying to seek out the Lord, we go to Colorado. And in Colorado, we spent our time in Glenwood Hot Springs. It was a really beautiful place. You go past Vail. And we're in the hotel. Uh, we go to sleep. I'm in this dream now. And in this dream, I close my eyes because I try and envision it every time. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember the movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Mm. Okay, so this is what happens in my dream. We're in the same hotel. All the furniture disappears in this dream. The walls become big. I become small like the movie. 
and the walls become white, bright, kind of like the lighting, but super bright. And then every picture that I remember of Jesus as a kid going to Catholic school, opening mm. up my religion book, and there's that pictures of Jesus, drawings, just started to go all over the wall. Mm. And I didn't know at this time what was happening because I'm still seeking out the Lord. I, I'm not really sure what this was. Now, looking back, easily, it's like, Mark, you had an encounter. It's like, oh, I did have an encounter. Wow. So, the room fills up with the pictures of Jesus, and the light felt warm and bright and good, and it was joyful and happy, and, and then the lights went away. And I started crying because I, whatever that feeling was for that moment that I had, it was special. Mm -hmm. It was something I've, I kind of, I can't explain what it was in that dream, except that it was the Lord saying, "Hey, I'm here." Wow! And then it was gone. I was like, "Oh, it's pitch black. I don't like this." And I cr crying, and I woke up, and I was like, "I think this just happened, and we have to go to Bethlehem. I want to go to Jerusalem. I want to see where wow. we walked." And so that that moment created a rocket ship for everything I was seeking leading up to later on in that year where I had um, sleep paralysis. I don't know if anyone's experienced sleep paralysis, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you just can't wake up. Yeah. It's, well, can move. Can't move. Right? It feels it was for me it was demonic. Mm -hmm. And in this in this nightmare that I have now later in, in that same year, I felt I was being held down. I was in a kitchen, I don't know if it was our kitchen, the cabinets were opening and closing. Okay, this is this is gross, this is weird. I'm trying to call out my my authority. Get out of here. You don't you don't belong here. But I couldn't say it in my dream. I couldn't, it was stuck here. I was thinking it, but I couldn't, it didn't come out. It finally came out and it sounded dark. My voice sounded dark and gross and demonic. It wasn't my voice. <gasps> But he didn't know I heard it. Oh yeah. wow! And I and when when he woke up, and uh, for the second time he was praying. And this is like you know in the middle of the night. And I asked him, I'm like, "Are you praying?" And he's like, "Yeah." But I was already so freaked out because I heard that voice, uh -huh. and so I didn't tell him until later that day because I was so freaked out. And this was when we were already kind of having our rift of him doing a lot of research on like spiritual warfare. warfare, and he went to like a deliverance event, and he was asking me to come with him, but I was like, mm -mm, no thank you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I am not doing that. And, wow. Yeah, and so, <laughs> yeah, now I'm like, okay, let's go. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, so that was, and then he, mm -hmm. you know, had, told his friend and it let you yeah i didn't know what it was to yeah. put what it meant to put your mm. armor on you know mm. what what is what does that mean and my friend started explaining but in this in this dream or nightmare i i was trying to call out to jesus and i couldn't it was scary it was scary and like kat said she heard my voice she heard a noise come out of my mouth that wasn't mine Woke up the next day, she told me, she's like, I, I don't want to tell you, but this is what I heard. And so it confirmed, I call my friend Ryan, I hope he sees this video, and he said, brother, uh, you need deliverance. And I was like, what wow. does that mean? And so he, he wow. calls me over to his space with his wife, and we went through deliverance, and that has never happened since then. Um, the Holy Spirit works tremendously through that couple, through Ryan and Lissa, and I'm so grateful, but that just, it just started continuing, continuing. It was going to war with my soldier gear, but not knowing how to shoot the mm. gun. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what it felt like. But I wanted to be a soldier. I wanted to just continue to walk and step through the doors, but I didn't know what doors were coming. I didn't, I was unprepared at this time. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was, yeah. 2021. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of how I felt as he's going onto this battlefield, right? And preparing to fight. I'm like, okay, I know I'm supposed to be standing next to you, but I'm going to battle with nothing. Like, I just felt so, mm. oh, like, you know, vulnerable and, and not, like he said, understanding that. And so that's when, you know, I started also praying and, and asking God, like, I need to know more. Like, how am I going to be there for my husband? Or like, if, you know, uh, the enemy's coming to attack our kids, mm -hmm. like, I want to be that warrior mom that, mm -hmm. you know, stands up for and is like, absolutely not. Like, you cannot bring that in here. You know, this house is protected by Jesus. And so um, that is when we saw the Bible college. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, that's it. Like, we're going. Wow. Yeah, and yeah, and then led to that the the service that same service. Oh yeah, 
that same service was incredible because uh, I had just struggled through that during that week, that Sunday we go to service. I'm trying to pull her away from this church that she's been going to, and you just gotta, you have to come. So she comes, we get to sit in the front, and at the end of service, pastor goes, you know, if anyone wants to give their life to Jesus, raise their hand. I, I'm already been baptized, but this felt, felt like another moment. And so I raise my hand, and he calls me to the front, and he says, what's your name? I'm like, Mark. He's like, Mark, God's telling me that these dreams that you're having, these nightmares will cease, but you have to do this, this, and that. And my friend Ryan is at church. She heard that. We don't understand. We're Again, we're still kind of new. We didn't understand how he would know that. Now that's God so speaking probably, through him, right? Yeah. So that was incredible. And it was so reassuring that we were in the space that we needed to be in at this new church that we were going to at that time. Yeah, yeah, which uh, coming from a mega church, you know, in mm -hmm. Irvine, where you feel like, you know, no Mariners, one really sees yeah. you. And then going to this church, which um, their Irvine campus is really small. And so when you arrive early, you get sat and you get sat at the front. <laughs> and so I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening right now? Um, and then for him to get called up front, it was just, it was, you know, an experience that at that moment, you're kind of like, what is going on? But looking back, it's just like, God is so good. Mm -hmm. You know, he is so good. And, and he oftentimes pulls you into places and spaces mm. that you don't want to be, mm. you know, but that's the way that he grows you and stretches you. And yeah. now we're here, yeah. you know, we're sitting here on a podcast talking about him. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. wow. you know, which for anyone that's yeah. your friend who's struggling about whether or not she should bring faith into her business, don't listen to anyone else. That's what we did in the beginning. We were kind of saying the same thing It's just, should we, people are saying we shouldn't because it's gonna cause a rift between what happens in our business. Mm -hmm. Now we're in a space where it's hard to even catch up to what's happening in the business because it's moving so fast. Mm -hmm. wow. Now that we fully surrender that to God. Yeah. Even me. So when you mention like, you know, because we have so many denominations, no, we just follow the Bible. We love Jesus and come over. You know, this is who we are. If we help you to find your path, you're welcome here. Whichever you are or you believe, like, welcome. We love you and we hope the better for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. It yeah. is so beautiful, Beto, what God is doing. So it's. Yeah, I think you, people have their career and they know what it is and they forget where their purpose is and it's always in God. So mm. if you feel a little empty, your purpose what does god want you to do mm -hmm. well it says in the bible you know we just have to continue to read the word to receive a word mm -hmm. if we're not in that bible we're not listening mm -hmm. to god yeah so people do get confused with their their but where's my purpose what's my purpose like i i feel that i should be doing um, i have the perfect job and the and a great family and i f my i f don't feel fulfilled well you're not you're not really being asked to be filled mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're only going to church on Sundays, and that's it. Mm -hmm. We're not meant to just be a, a Sunday Christian. Wow. Yeah. Ah, that's good. Maybe you're not just meant to be a Sunday Christian. That's going to be a quotable quote, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Thank okay you. so now uh, just point people to you know, Elevate. Maybe if people are local, how can they you know get to know you more or find out about what you guys do? Yeah, so our website is Elevate, so E-L-E-V-8-performance.com. Um, and our Instagram handle is at Elevate, E-L-E-V, the number eight, performance. So either of those ways, reach out and we would love to welcome anyone that's local in. Yeah. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Beto, and it's not that far. We don't need to make that as an yeah. excuse. Mm, I like that. <laughs> okay. I really like you guys, you know, so I, I'm convinced, you know, so I, it's just a matter of making it happen. Yeah. Um, thank you, my friends, for listening today, maybe watching, whatever you're watching. I want to invite you to like, subscribe, share this episode with a friend. Visit us at christianpodcast.com. Uh, we have English and Spanish episodes. Now I'm <laughs> kind of like marketing it as Christian Podcast Latino. Because <laughs> we're Latinos, right? So yeah. you'll get us, Beto and Millie, in every episode. And uh, we'll bring you stories. We'll bring you the Bible. We'll bring you fun and maybe even inspiration. Right? So we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Amen. Bye-bye.